usually when you're working on a Kotlin project, your code is organized into projects within your IDE, your text editor, or other tool. But sometimes you just quickly want to see how a function works or find an expression's value or just do a quick uh, experimentation, maybe the new library or um, function or um, idea that you have without actually generating a project to see what it will look like. So Kotlin fortunately provides um, some tools to help with this. And in this video, I'm going to show you a few ways that you can quickly run some Kotlin code on the fly um, easily and without uh, creating a new project. If you're using IntelliJ IDEA or Android Studio, then you can use a built-in functionality that ships with those IDEs. So one of those is called a scratch file. And essentially what a scratch file does is that it um, allows you to create code drafts in the IDE window, and then you can just run them on the fly. And the way we create a scratch file is by navigating from file, new, and then create scratch file. We want a Kotlin scratch file, and here we go. Now in the left panel is where you type your code and in the right is where it will be uh, printed once it's executed. Notice that we have interactive mode checked here. So as I type, the code is going to be executed and printed on the right. Yeah, it prints. So you can run any type of Kotlin uh, code in here and see the output on the right. Now, let's say we want to uh, use some files or classes that are in our uh, project here. The way we do that is by selecting a demo here. And here, if you have some files or classes that you want to use, let's say, uh, a class called test. And it just prints out a greeting. So this. And now we want to use it in a scratch file. Uh, test. We need to import that. It's detected because we selected the demo module. And then now we can call the function. If you notice on the right, it was supposed to print something, but nothing showed up. And that's because since I made these changes, the scratch file has not updated its context to include those changes. So what we need to do is select make module before run and then run it. And now we can see that it runs and prints from this method because now those changes have been pulled into the scratch file context. So now if we keep uh, typing, see now automatically it picks up the changes and prints them on the right. We can also use this in, as opposed to using in an interactive mode, you can use it in REPL. Interactive mode executes the entire scratch file while REPL only executes the new code that you add to the end of the scratch file. So if we disable this and enable use REPL, here, if I add new code, since this top, uh, everything from line one to seven was executed on the right already, what I type in is the only thing that will be executed. So let's say I change this to full one, power one. But then if you look in the, where the line numbers are, you see this double angle brackets. If I click that, you see nothing else changes. The changes are made uh, from on line five and seven or not executed, only what I added. And you can also create functions just as I would do in a Kotlin class. So uh, let's look at a, what's a good example. Let's say function that uh, say counts characters and string just print out number of characters. So let's say it's done. And then if you want to call that same function, click here. And now if you click, see on the right, it shows up. So this is useful for if you just want to uh, run code from a point in time. 